how love and compassion truly can change lives. I am not forgotten is the theme of Tear Fund's latest North Island tour with guest speaker Richmond Wandera from Uganda. As a child, Richmond was like many other children in that country, living in very poor circumstances with little hope of a better future. But the compassion of a young woman who lived across the other side of the world changed his world forever. Her sponsorship of Richmond through Compassion International gave him and his family much needed practical, emotional and spiritual support. Richmond himself went on to complete a university education, which subsequently led him to set up a cross-cultural mentoring program for Christian pastors. Extraordinary achievements for a boy who grew up in such dire circumstances. Richmond shared his story with George Pink. Richmond Wandera, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us about your childhood in Uganda. It wasn't an easy time growing up, was it? No, it wasn't. 1990 was a very difficult year for me as a child. I was eight years old then. And uh, I remember one day going to school and uh, I was sent home for school fees. And so I returned home and I found that uh, my father had been murdered. And that scene changed my life. Uh, it was worse than just my father being murdered. My mother also, who was present, had gone into a heart arrest. And uh, her cardiac suffering made things way worse for us. So as children, we didn't know what to do. And I, so when I say children, we were six, I and, and five of my other siblings. And so that changed a lot for us as kids. It was very difficult receiving a notice later on that we had to leave the house that we were staying in, which my dad was paying for, and moved to a slum called Naguru Kasenke. This is one of Uganda's largest slums. I remember the feeling walking into this new place that we're, co we're going to call home, a 12 by 12 teen house. And I knew that moment that my life had changed. So tell us what was life in that slum like? You didn't have enough food then? More than just not having enough food, it was every day just being scared of the little things. Every time it rained for us, we knew that it was a night of staying awake because our tin roof had like holes in our roof and every time it rained you could just see the water coming through. Um, but not only that, mosquitoes. Um, with all these perforations that we put in intentionally so that we can have fresh air into the house, those are the same holes that mosquitoes come in through. And so for a kid, seeing <laughs> all this happening in my community, kids, one kid after the other, falling sick of malaria, you know, you're scared as a kid that uh, never know tomorrow it might be you. And knowing that malaria is a killer disease, that was a real fear in which we lived with. But then something changed, didn't it, when you got a sponsor through Compassion? What was your reaction? How did you feel when you found out that somebody in a, in a distant country was going to help you in that way and sponsor you? I, I think uh, the, the closest word I can find is uh, joy and celebration. I remember uh, when my mom got news that we had got a Compassion sponsor. Her name was Heather. She was 15 years old when she decided to sponsor me. Uh, that news was brought to us and in Africa, we have a very strong cultural sound when you're celebrating. Uh, if you will, I could try that here. It's goes something like, "Aye!" <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that didn't come out well. But 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 women in Africa will do that really loud. I mean, you could you could not believe the sound. But my mom, she just went on and on and on, and we celebrated as a family for days. The joy that filled our room, I cannot find the words to describe. Wow. I knew that it was, it was food was going to be provided. I also knew that my health was going to be taken care of. I also knew that I was going to go back to school because I wanted so badly to go back to school. But then uh, inside me, I had been in these places for so long that within me, much had been destroyed as a child. Uh, there was a deep sense of hopelessness. Now, this news changed 
much of that. But it, the other part was, was the darkness, the, to, to erase the voice, uh, the ugly voice of poverty that had been like for a long time in me following that death. And so that hopelessness gradually left as I continued to go into the compassion program, as I continued playing with other kids, as uh, the teachers of the kids at the compassion program I remember people like Uncle Dennis and Uncle Salongo. These are people who loved me as their own child. They were these compassion instructors. And so as they continued to love on me, slowly by slowly, that healing happened. There was also a change for you in a spiritual sense. Tell us about that. When I went to the compassion program and I began to hear things about the Lord Jesus, things about how we have an invisible God who truly loves us, um, that, that was new to me. But then uh, with my relationship with Heather, as Heather kept writing to me and we exchanged letters back and forth, it became real that someone who I have never physically seen is real and they truly care for me because, see, I'm going to school because of their help. That made it easy for me as a child to relate to a God who I did not see and uh, facilitated by the messages that I was given as a child at the Compassion Program, June the 3rd, 1996, I accepted the Lord Jesus. And that spiritually changed me. Soon it was going to change my five siblings and my mother as well. The message of salvation that I received, when I went back home with these new songs, singing with this new hope, they were attracted to this message. They said, Richmond is so happy. There is something that Richmond has received. And right now, each one of my siblings knows the Lord. And so I think that is how compassion reached my siblings and my whole family as well. So looking back, how do you feel towards the lady who sponsored you? I think Heather is a hero. I think for me, that act of faith, stepping out and holding the hand of a stranger, it, it had to take faith, it had to take something um, Christ-like for that to happen. And she is not just my hero, but I, I view her as my mother as well. Because she mothered, she told me words like, Richmond, I love you. And I believed, I believed. At first, you know, it was hard to receive those because it's like, you know, you don't know me, how can you love me? But then, as she said it over and over again, I believed it. And God took those words to connect me to a motherly love, where I could receive those words that every human being needs. And when Heather decided to sponsor me, that connection changed my life. It is possible to change an individual's life by you connecting to them. Thank God for people who are living out of their Christian walk, touching lives in his name. Pastor Richmond Wandera from Uganda. And as he explained in that interview, his mother and siblings were also able to benefit from his sponsorship through Compassion International. Richmond continued his education through university with a BA in accounting as well as a master's degree in theology. And he also founded the Pastors Discipleship Network program which so far has established mentoring relationships between pastors in America and more than 300 pastors in Uganda. The website for more information about that organization is pdnafrica.org. Again, the website is pdnafrica.org. And if you'd like to know more about how you can sponsor a child and make a positive difference in their life, you'll find the information you need on the Tear Fund website, which is tearfund.org. Dot org dot nz.